What's up guys, Bloodshed here. Today we're bringing you the shadow set for Diablo 3 patch 272 in season 25. Now we are on the PTR going through all the builds, checking out the changes, seeing what new legendary gems affects what. If you don't know, there's a new soul shard theme. Um, you can find the video on my channel. I'll try to put a link in the description, but yeah, there's tons of new legendary gems, which right now are stronger than ethereals together with both gems. You get one in your helm and one in your weapon. So it does a lot of good work for Shadow. Let me bring up some gameplay while I talk about it. So this is our footage from today on stream. Um, and like always, our testing, we cap our Paragon at 800. Our gem levels are only 25 this season. And then of course we have the two tier three Soul Shard gems, which is the seasonal theme, right? No augments, nothing like that. I like to test things at a low level so you guys can get a gauge on the power and kind of see where it's at for yourself. Let's try to, can we get this yellow bar off the screen? Uh, either way. So, Shadow's crushing it. She, my Shadow time was very similar to my Lon Hoda time if you watched the previous video. It's doing really well. Um, and the reason why we're even covering it today is because it did get a buff. In addition to getting the two new legendary gems for the season, it gets a buff. So the six piece bonus still gives you 75k damage. Um, on the first enemy you hit, but now you get 25,000 to subsequential enemies. Um, so it's a nice little mini area damage build now. It helps tremendously for wave clear. So what I'm gonna do in the video is show you my favorite version of the shadow build, um, show you what legendary gems I decided to go with. Uh, but do remember it's the PTR, so things can change. You know, the PTR, the gems could get buffed or nerfed, or they can add new gems, they can revamp gems completely. So definitely check the website, bloodshed.com, um, as the latest for the latest and greatest version of the build. I'm gonna update my website like I always do every single season with tier lists, leveling guides, all that stuff to get you guys well equipped for the upcoming season. Also, these videos do take time to make, so if you could leave a like or maybe even comment on the video, I would appreciate it greatly. Um, so if you don't even know what shadow is, it's a shadow set. It's like a ninja set for the demon hunter. Um, it's very mobile and you throw out these three like kind of uh, knives or daggers, right? It's also the the Hadrig for season 25. So this is the actual starter set everybody's gonna get. It's arguably the best starter set um, because there's a lot of things that make it strong to start. Like you get the, the dagger has only two possible like upgrades. So you get a dagger, you upgrade it. It's going to be the dagger you need for the set or it's going to be a different dagger. So you have a 50% chance to get the one that you need. Really powerful set. Um, and it performs really well early on at a, at, a, at a low level. It scales well into high level, especially now with the gems. But um, really good single target, you know, solid AOE now with the changes. Um, let's go ahead and get into the build and I'll show you guys what's up. So our Barb 120, uh, I didn't fish for it. This is just our first clear, right? Did a 120 in seven minutes with, again, the 800 Paragon, the low gem levels, all that stuff. For the Shadow Set Demon Hunter, we did a 120 in 745 with the Shadow's Mantle Set. So that was pretty cool. Again, we didn't use any, there's a lot of like buggy gems and kind of like things that are not working properly. This is all stuff that's going to be in the game, right? So why is Shadow doing so well besides the fact that they nerfed the wave clear on everything? Well, these gems have an attack speed buff on it. Those are the ones that I went with, right? When you critically hit an enemy, you gain an attack speed buff. And then in addition, the terror gem and the helm, your attack speed and crit are increased by 7% for each skill on cooldown. So as long as you're spamming your cooldowns constantly, you know, um, you're going to be getting a a juiced up crit chance. Look at us at 61% chance here, right? Um, when we have things on cooldown. So you can get a lot more cooldown, get a lot more deeps out of your build. I love to use the Augild build. I kind of play this like a frenzy barb slash Hoda barb. Like I go with attack speed and elite damage if possible. So uh, I go with the Augild set, but there's a lot of different like setups you can use. Find whatever build works for you. This is just my favorite. Um, in the cube, I have Don and Aquila and Ring of Royal Grandeur to tie all this in together. So I still play it like an Elite Hunter build, but now I just get to kill Density way easier than before. If you don't know about the Pain Gem, um, you get the attack speed boost. It reduces your crit by 15, um, but you get extra damage against incapacitated enemies. So that's really good. 
I just kind of um, stun them and I'm assuming stun works with it. It seems to work really well. So rattling roll is going to stun them for 1.5 seconds and then I DPS them. I try to do that on COE cycle, for instance, I'm using the cold build. So right before cold, um, as I'm DPSing, I'm going to tumble through them and then DPS them right up close. So they're getting hit by all three daggers. And that's pretty much the main DPS combo, right? Um, you can back up even if you're in trouble and then on cold cycle, make sure you go in, stun them and then DPS. You're gonna be attacking so fast that, you know, you'll just be shredding them anyway. And then the Rift Guardian, just make sure you're up on the Rift Guardian, do your damage that way. Um, for gem gems, I'm using Gogok, Trapped, and Stricken. You don't have to use Stricken. It's an incredible single target already. You can use Pain Enhancer for even more crazy attack speed boosting, which is probably what the meta will be. But um, again, I play it like my I play it like a Frenzy Barb in a way, where I like my Rift Guardians to go very smoothly. Um, I can do like 20 second Rift Guardian kills this way. I like it a lot. Your car lies, um, you probably don't want Vitality on it. Um, again, we're gonna have a, a link in on, we're on the website of exactly what you need, but in case the website's down, or just so you guys can see, I can kind of go through the stat priorities, right? So you probably want elemental damage, unless you're using lightning. So lightning or cold, it's up to you. I prefer cold right here, because I like overpen. But you could use Ricochet. Ricochet is better for resource. Overpen, you can kind of line up more damage. They're both really good. I would say I would build into whatever holy point I get. Because it's really hard to get a good holy point shot. Like, So if I got a super good holy point shot with lightning on it, I might consider going lightning. But cold should have the higher ceiling. So for this example, we'll say cold, um, main stat, attack speed crit, and then impale damage. So this one doesn't have impale damage. I would take off it and try to get one with impale. But again, these are really hard to get. You even need a secondary. You want your secondary as high as possible, close to 100. Uh, for Carlite Point, I like damage percent, attack speed, and area damage. But in this case, we have main stat, and that's totally fine. If you don't farm a lot of Paragon and you have, you only farm like maybe 800 Paragon a season, you know, six, 600 to 900, I would say just go with damage, main stat, and attack speed. You can just forget the area damage. You already do enough wave clear now with the new ability. Um, so this would be this would what, what, what it would look like if you don't farm a lot of Paragon. But at a super high level on the leaderboard, like rank one, you'll probably see people with AD on their weapon. Um, for the shoulders, you want AD and cooldown. On the gloves, double crit, AD, cooldown. You can see where we're going uh, with this right here. Double crit, cooldown. Um, you really just need enough cooldown to keep up your vengeance, right? Um, yeah, so it, that's, that's really all the cooldown that you need in the build. Um, for me, it's I think it's like 26%, especially if you use Gogok of Swiftness. So you can see this timer is about to run out here, but the cooldown's not up. So I think it's 26% with Gogok, and that's all you need right there. There's a little gap. It's important because the Vengeance, we're using the Dark Heart rune. It gives us 50% damage reduction. It helps a lot with that. Chain of Shadows, after you use Impale, you get a free Vault. I love that. It's pretty good. And then Endless Walk Set. It's just really good in transition. And then when you're standing still, when you really want to kill something like a Rift Guardian or an, a Stubborn Elite, the longer you stand still, the more you get that damage increase for there. So... This build is really open. You can kind of do a lot of different combos with it. I'm not even sure what people are using on the leaderboard. This is just my favorite version of the build. Keep in mind, um, I do play a lot of hardcore, so my builds tend to be on the tankier side. Um, but they still, you know, we're still crushing it. You know, lot, lots of damage and everything. If you're playing hardcore and you're really nervous about playing the build, you can swap out COE for Unity, and you should be super duper tanky with that. And then here's the build itself. Um, I have awareness. You can definitely take off awareness and use another damage passive. Um, if you don't know, Numbing Traps works off of Phantom Knives and it gives you, um, they do 25% less damage to you. So this gives you lots of armor and then this they do reduce damage to you. So I spam these whenever possible. The boar makes you tanky. If you're playing softcore, you can maybe go a different route with it, like Wolf Companion, and then you pop Wolf before. COE cycle to get that extra damage. Um, uh, dark heart, you probably want to go dark heart. If you're running speeds, you're probably going to run out of resource, right? If you're doing like low level speeds or 90s or even hundreds, sometimes you're one tapping because the build's so strong. You can go to Seethe and you get hatred. 
you know, on a low level, especially like T16 until you get your, you know, uh, God set or whatever you want to speed farm with. You definitely focus on resource that way. Um, yeah, for speeds also, um, I probably would go like tumble or something like that. So definitely we'll have all the builds on the website. Everything will be updated before the season. You just hover over Diablo, you look at what you want. So you're gonna play Demon Hunter, you click on Demon Hunter, you look for the shadow set, right? This is still season 24. It's gonna be all set up for season 25 when you're when it matters, right? So you click on shadow and then boom, you have your shadow build, right? And then for key farming, impale, multi-shot, god set, all the best builds are here. You want a god set, solo key farmer, you click on it and it'll bring up the build for you, okay? So, thanks again, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy these kind of PTR preview builds. I wanna give you guys some gameplay, give you guys a build, and then let you know how it's progressing on the PTR. Not everybody has the time to spend and grind it all out on the PTR and test things at a low level, test things without bug gems. This is Bloodshed, I'm out of here, peace.